Alright guys, so the hair that I'll be using is from Diamond Virgin Hair Company. I will be using their Mink Brazilian Curly. The length of this hair is 226 inch bundles, 224 inch bundles, and I also will be using an 18 inch free parting lace closure of the same texture as the Mink Brazilian Curly hair. This is some beautiful hair it's amazing and so soft all right so let's talk about the tools that we'll need so first you'll need a weaving cap that is essential that's what you're going to put your hair on you're also going to need a needle i prefer to use a curved needle t-pins your mannequin head and stand and you will also need clips to secure your unit down all right so your t-pins are very um important they're going to make sure that your weaving cap is going to lay down nice and secure so taking the tabs i like to kind of pull them taut and then using a t-pin I secure that down just to make sure I have a flat surface when I'm working with my wig do the same thing to the other side and if you so choose you can also use your t-pins and place them right um, at the forehead of your mannequin I don't know you know something like that <laughs> Once you've secured your T-pins, we are then going to begin working on our lace closure. So I personally like to place my closure down first. This kind of sets the tone for me and just make sure that I have enough room for my closure on my unit. So I'm just going to place that right in the center of my weaving cap and I'm going to line that up with like the free edge part of my weaving unit cap thingy there and then I'm going to take my gator clips and secure both sides to make sure nothing is moving around now you don't want to place the gator clips on the very ends because that's where you're going to actually be um, threading so just kind of like in the center but make sure you're pulling it taut so that it doesn't move all right so you also want to make sure that you thread using your needle and thread. I just thought I'd show this to you guys because, you know, I don't know, maybe somebody doesn't know how to do that. You know what I'm saying? So what I like to do here is um, I'm going underhanded when I am threading. And as you guys can see, the reason that I do this is so that um, there are no lumps or bumps in my weaving unit. Um, I used to go overhanded, but I noticed that I would have a really lumpy um, unit and it wasn't very seamless and smooth. So what you do, you just take your, your needle, go through one of the holes, meet up with the free edge part of your lace closure, pull through and it is secure. like so. You guys will notice that this gets very redundant, so I'm going to speed this up a bit, but um, you pretty much just do the same thing. Go over and under, you know, over and under through the woods. Now, for this part here, I actually did go overhanded, but that was because I wanted to make sure that you guys could see exactly how um, to weave or to secure down your lace closure. I, again, I don't recommend doing this, but this was just for the purpose of showing you how to secure down the unit. Okay, one more time just to make sure we got it. I even zoomed in for you guys a little bit. So you're gonna take that needle and push it through one of those little holes, meet up with the free edge of your lace closure and pull through. And then you can go, if you so choose, through the thread to create a knot. But you really don't have to do that when you're like in the middle part. That is really only important when you're on the outermost part when you're first starting because you need to create um, a knot there so that the closure doesn't come apart. You get what I'm saying? Alright, and again, I'm just going to speed this up and let you guys see how this goes. Um, but the name of the game is practice, guys. So keep on practicing and then you'll be a pro in no time. All right, so once you're done there, then you can see our closure is ready to go. And it's okay to have that part kind of um, a little bit of movability because we're going to cut that and that's where we're going to be able to um, make a nice, realistic looking front part. If you have made it this far, loves, congratulations. I have no doubt in my mind that you can complete your wig. We're going to next move on to the base of our unit where we'll be working with our bundled hair. So let's get started. 
Starting with the 26 inch bundles first, I am going to sew down the, um, the wefts onto my cap. Now, I'm going to keep them doubled um, because I want to make sure that I can fit as much hair as I possibly can onto my unit. So, as you guys can see, I just folded it over and doubled the wefts um, again to make sure I can fit as much hair on the, on the weaving cap as I can. Now, this wig in particular is a little bit special because I am creating one that I could put into a ponytail. So where I normally would sew the hair down right there, I'm not going to. I'm actually going to sew the hair down above the tabs that you see, um, as you guys can see here. That's just going to uh, make sure that I can cut that area and then sew it down. So when you're measuring, you're just going to go from side to side and make sure that you measure um, enough hair from each side to each side. Taking your T-pin, you can secure each side again in preparation for sewing the hair down. Once you've measured your weft from side to side, we can now begin to sew the weft down onto the weaving cap. So remove that T-pin and just as you did with your lace closure, you're gonna follow the same suit when going through the weft. Now, because it is double weft, um, right in this area, it might seem a little bit difficult to get the needle through because I am pushing through the wefts. That's really important just to make sure that you secure down the edges of um, the weft. Once you've done that, then you can um, begin to do the underhand method where you're actually looping over the weft, which is recommended to be sure that you do not experience any unwanted shedding and it just makes sure that you have um, a longer lasting unit. Now, I am not the weaving police people, so if you like to um, sew through your wefts, then by all means do that, but I find it a little bit easier when I um, loop over my wefting. Um, it just makes it easier for me to make my unit, and it goes back by a lot faster as opposed to constantly trying to work through the weft, especially if you are doubling your wefts. Um, so again, just follow that same suit. As I stated before, guys, it gets very redundant. You're gonna do the same thing over and over again, just under and over, under and over. Once you've done that, you are like a pro girl. That's, that's, how, that's how it goes down. That's how you make a wig. <laughs> but we're gonna keep going because I'm gonna make sure that you guys are A1 ready to make your wigs out of doubt so let's just keep on moving so if you've gotten this far and you're a little tripped up just pause take a breather and if you need to rewind and kind of see what I did again feel free to do that this video is here for you it's for it to be in the comfort of your home for you to make a unit all by yourself honey okay so um, after that you're just gonna keep on weaving doing the um, under and over and pull through method Alright, so now we're getting closer to the edge of the wig and this is the part where you're going to again go through the weft and secure um, your, your hair weave down to the cap. So um, eventually I'll get over there. <laughs> any minute now, Jackson, any minute. It's, it's gonna happen people I'll be over there in no time I promise almost there good god almost all right nope nope not yet no uh, maybe nope Just 
still not quite, maybe. <laughs> All right, guys, so no, we're really here now. Okay, so I'm gonna remove that T-pin out of the way eventually. And I'm gonna work on the very end. So, all right, removing that T-pin. I told you I'd do it. Okay, I'm taking that T-pin out and then I'm going to go underneath the wig and the weft and then I'm going to pull the needle through and you guys will see that. Once you have pushed the needle through the weft, then you can go ahead and push the needle um, through the thread and this is going to help you create the knot. Once the knot is pulled taut and secure, you can cut the um, needle away from the thread, leaving enough space for you to create a couple more knots just to make sure it's secure. So, you know, just take your thread and create like two knots is what I usually like to do. And then I just cut off the access and then we can move on. So, since you have hair left over, the only thing that you will do is just fold it over and that is the fold over method that is oh so popular. Um, again, the fold over method is just going to further ensure that you don't experience a whole lot of um, shedding with your webs. Now there will come a point where I will begin to cut the webs but we're not there yet. In the meantime, just enjoy this repetitive nature of this wig making process. <laughs>
this point, you should be done with the back or nape area of your unit. And as you can see, the hair is pretty long, 26 inches. I, I've never worn hair this long, so this should be very interesting. I'm gonna see if I can make it or if um, I will be scratching my life away feeling like something's crawling on me. I don't know, wish me luck. But at this point, we're gonna start working on the top part of our unit. Um, and we're going to address the tab area. So here's the tab area. And what I like to do is to make sure that I have a very flat surface, especially around the crown or um, the, like the edge of your, of your head. Um, I like to begin to cut my wefts so what I like to do from side to side, I measure um, the length of my weft and then I just begin to sew. So I'll show you guys that. Move out those tabs as always and then you're going to measure. So the key point for this part right here is to make sure that you have a very flat surface. So where we were like um, doubling the wefts in the back. We can't do that here or else we're going to have a very bulky um, looking wig and that just doesn't look appealing. So I am going to cut my wefts um, at this point. I'm going to secure each side by using my T-pins and then I'm just going to sew from each side as I did previously all the way till you get up to the very tippity tippity top. All right, so next I'm just gonna measure, and instead of doing the fold over method, because we don't want bulkiness, I am going to cut right where my wig ends. So you can kind of match that up, and um, just make sure that, you know, you have a, it's, it's even and it matches up with each other. And then at that point, it's very redundant. You're gonna do the same thing, place your T-pin there, and then do the same formation until you get all the way up to your closure and then we'll stop there and do something a little different. All right, loves, we have made it to the home stretch. So we're just gonna place our last weft right in that open space there. Um, and you're gonna sew as you normally would. But I just want you guys to pay attention to connecting the weft to the closure space because you don't want any gaping holes. So again, I'm gonna measure it as we did before. I'm gonna cut, I'm gonna apply my T-pins, and then I'm gonna start sewing. Right. So um, only this time I'm going to go through the, um, the weft and also the closure. So I'll let you guys see that again. So you're going to go uh, through the weft and through the closure. Like so. And you're going to do that until you get to the very end. I like to go through the closure and the weft. This is just to make sure that there's no gaping holes there and to make sure that everything is just nice and secure. Um, you know, you don't want anything to come unraveled or anything like that because this is an investment piece for you. You've taken all this time, you've probably paid some decent coins to get that hair. So you wanna make sure that this unit lasts you as long as you possibly want it to. So taking the time and, and doing things right the first time is just going to ensure that um, your unit lasts you for as long as you like.
All right, so once you've made it to the very end, of course, what you'll do, you'll keep sewing, and then you'll sew that area down, create that knot as we did before to secure everything together, and you're all done. And voila, honey, here is your wig, okay? Clap it up for the wig game, okay? I know that it is off the chain right now, and you are running through your house like, Lord, I made this wig, hallelujah. <laughs> I hope that you guys have enjoyed this video. I had so much fun making it. Please give me a thumbs up if you guys would like to see how I install this unit onto my head. Also, give it a thumbs up if you've liked it and you found it informative. I hope that this will be um, a video that you can source when you're trying to make your units, okay? If so, then please be sure to share it with your friends. Comment, like, subscribe. You guys know the truth. I will catch you all in my next video where you will be able to see this unit on my head. So keep a look out for that. As always, guys, I love you so much for watching. I and my wig, who I have named Janet Jackson, will see you in the next video. Until then, guys, love you so much. Peace out.